We, are, we have arrived at a rather wonderful part of the course, which is always just the next part of the course, but this is pretty great. Um, it's projections and it will lead us into the normal equation which helps us solve uh, ax equals b when we can't solve ax equals b. All right, so that's always good. So we're trying to get to, to uh, figuring out how we do the, how we find the best approximation, right? So if we can't make b out of a's columns, what's the closest we can do, right? So the, so the first thing here will be um, just this idea of projection. So that will, you, hopefully you'll see that how that could help because now we know about column spaces and null space and left null space and row space. So, right. We know we can solve AX equals B if B is in column space. Right. All right, so we're gonna get there, but let's start with uh, just projections. Then we'll get to this normal equation business. We will uh, have a few examples along the way. Uh, there'll be some, uh, there'll be a, a rather nice piece about uh, null spaces, a little proof. And um, that will kind of complete the big picture fairly much for us, but um, fairly much, mostly. Still more to do. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we're going to have now, so we, this is simple, we're just going to project a vector onto a line. If you haven't heard of that before, then hopefully it will seem simple once, once I've described it. We'll introduce this idea of an error vector, right? So this is uh, how far away a particular vector is from some nice space that we like it to be. We'll get to that. And as I said, so we're handling AX equals B when there are no, solu no solutions are possible. Right. And this is this big idea of best approximation. Right. So I've written a lot of this out, so I'm just going to talk through it. Uh, so we have some vector B. I'll use notation that will help us uh, connect back to our AX equals B thing. So B is, yeah, it's going to be B. So we've got some vector B, and then we've got another vector A, uh, which really is has a length, whatever length that you want, but really it's about the direction of A. Right? That's, that's the key piece here. And what we want to do is take B, so here's B, and break it into two pieces. There's a projected part, which lies along the axis uh, that lies along the line. And this is just in two dimensions, but it works in M dimensions, right? So we've just got one vector and one line, and we're trying to find the component of this vector B in that direction. So to do that, we have to break it into two pieces, which is exactly this, this drawing here, right? So there's the component of B that is in the direction of A, which is here. And then there's a component of B, B that is at right angles. And so that's this piece here. So we could break, we could break B down in different ways, right? So maybe I'll add some pieces that I can delete. We could, we could break B down in this way. We could have just this much, right? But then we're clearly, we've still got some of uh, A involved in this second vector here, right? It's still traveling in this direction. Right, so we want, we want uh, exactly the P for which the bit that we have to add to get to B is absolutely at right angles to this direction A. All right, so next we're gonna think of, after this we'll think about, in a few steps, we'll think about projecting onto a plane Right, so you could project on a plane, you could project uh, onto, in general, an M-dimensional subspace. And one way to think about this is that there is kind of light shining down here, and this is the part that's in shadow. Another would be to imagine this line is, is, is horizontal with the ground, and here's our vector, and you just drop it down with a plumb line, All right? So that's... It's a fun word to use, so let's use it. So we could, so we could think of this as, uh, if this is gravity, right, then there'd be a plumb line would go in this direction. Okay, all right. 
Okay, we have Ys here as well, so that's a, a little piece of suspicious use of Ys. Of course, we are trying to keep the same story, right? So column space lives in Y space. So P is for projected component and E is for error. Yep, okay, good. So why are we doing this? Right, that's this piece down here. So uh, there, there's projections useful in lots of uh, different areas, but here's, here's the reason that's central to us. So if we're solving A equals B and B is not in the column space, right? We're solving this, B is not in the column space. So there's, before we would have given up, there's no solution, but we can actually still solve this, right? We can still solve A x equals uh, P if we, if we think it's not X anymore, it's gonna be some other X, A X star equals P. We have to give it a slightly different, we have to call it something else, right? We can't solve A x equals B. And the crucial thing is, this is where P is B's projection onto column space. So that's in the next little piece, but it's, it's best approximation. And it should have this idea, right? So this will be column space, and this will be left null space, broadly speaking. Right? Left null space we can't make with our columns. Column space is exactly what we can. All right. Okay, so how to find uh, the, the projected vector. And the error vector given we have uh, these two things, we're given B and we're given the direction we want to um, find its component in. So there are a couple of things we, we need. We want the projection to be parallel, right? so to A, and mathematically that means we're going to put P is some multiple of A, and I've put a little X star here. That'll connect back later on. This is not a, a vector, it's just some number in R at this point because we're just talking about lines. Okay. And we need this to be true as well, that uh, the error vector is perpendicular to, to A. So what's that mathematically? Again, simple thing. M matrix multiplication is built out of dot products and which we refer to as inner products. Right, so if we set these up, the E vector and the A vector, doesn't matter which way you put them, which are, have those variations there, then their inner product is zero. They're at right, right angles to each other. So the monks, always nearby, whispering strange things. Um, it's often about food. They do talk about food a lot, which seems not very relevant. Um, <clears throat> somewhat corpulent. Oh. Monk friends, but they say, let's use this orthogonality and a few other pieces. So, all right, so let's build this out. This is, a, this is a nice little piece. So we start with, we want B equals P plus E, and we want these P and, e, the P and E to have these properties. So let's do that. And you'll see how this will generalize in a little bit. So I'm just going to put these pieces here. And then let's wrap some... brackets around them, and we'll pre-multiply them by A transpose. Really cool things will happen here. Okay, so we have this. What happens? All right, so we have A transpose, uh, B on the left. These are two vectors we've been given, right? So we've been given this, given this, and we don't know what these are, we don't know what these are, we've been given this. Okay, so this, this is some number we can compute. It's a dot product. An inner product, this is just a number. We'll come back to that later on. Uh, the, the, fact, the fact that that's a nice little number. Because we can do very sneaky things with it. Okay, so let's break these two apart. It's, uh, right, so again, inner products. Another inner product here. And we use our first, this thing the monks were talking about. This is zero, right? We, we want that to be true. Okay, we're just forcing it. Now, we also want that P is some multiple of A. So we can put that in here too. So this is X star times A. Right, so we've used both the properties that we require of P and E. <coughs> Breathing is not good. So this is equal to X star star A transpose A. Right, it's just a number. Just a number. You can pull it out. 
And now we have a, a solution here. So we can say this multiple x star, this thing we're looking for, is equal to, right, this is just a number again. So there's nothing bad about doing this, even though they're vectors on, we're dividing by vectors. It's a number divided by a number. Done, right? So, so now we're, we're set, right? So we have P equals this number times A. It has to point in A's direction, so we knew that from the start. So that's A, A transpose B. Again, number divided by a number, so it's a ratio. All right, so all of this is some, some scaling of A. Right, it could be a positive number, a negative number, um, right, project. And if, uh, if, if, if B is orthogonal to A, then we would get zero here, right? And that's clear in this top part. Good. And how do we find E? Well, we have, that's very simple. So we just say E equals B minus P. Done. Okay, so that's pretty good. So let's we'll do a uh, we'll do an example where we where again given a, a given b project the uh, the b onto the a and 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 find the, and make sure everything works and then we'll do something very sneaky okay so again some of this has worked out already so we're projecting this vector b minus three minus one onto a again it's just the direction one two this could be ten twenty. We minus 500 minus 1000 we just right the direction uh, is all that matters b is a, is a specific vector so that, that that really does matter okay so here's a picture of it sort of illustrating where things will go um a is right so a is here describes this direction that's actually a itself b is over here so we want to break it into these two pieces, visually. Maybe do it like this, right? So we will, there's our error and then our uh, projected piece, our projected piece as well. Okay, so let's do the calculation. So it's A transpose B, one, two, right? Minus three, minus one, divided by, and this is a, we'll see this structure again when we do the Gram-Schmidt method. method. One, two. This piece on the bottom, right, it's A transpose A, that is the length of A squared. Very important. We're about to come back to it. So on top we have uh, minus three, minus two, so that's minus five. And on the bottom we have five, so it's minus one. And so P is simply minus one times A. So in this case, it's minus one, minus two. And the error vector is then B subtracting P. So minus three, minus one, minus, minus one, minus two. So hopefully, hopefully that's not too bad mechanically. You can just work through it. Of course, we want you to understand it very deeply. Uh, minus two and one. So note uh, that P is orthogonal to E as required. All right, if you take the dot product of these two, you get minus two, sorry, plus two, minus two, so it's zero. So here they are, right? This, here's the, the P that we just found, minus one, minus two. Here's the minus two, one for E. They add up, if you add them together, right? Of course they have to because we structure structured like this to give minus three and minus one. And indeed this is minus one, minus two, right? So by construction, it has to be in the direction of one, two. It's a simple multiple or negative. Okay, so let's do something more sophisticated. Yeah, let's do something more sophisticated. So this, moving over to this side. Okay, I'm just gonna talk our way through this. So we have this structure, right? So this is some number times a. So the projected part of b is some number times a, and the b is hidden in here. So one thing about this that's not great is that we have to recalculate for every 
right? So let me note that. So this is a sort of not ideal, not great to have to recalculate uh, for, for each B. Right, that's not great. A is, uh, you know, a direction we, we, we'd sort of want to get away from this. What we really like is a matrix that does the job, right? So we really want a gadget matrix that projects B, that projects B, right, as an operator, right? It comes along and we've seen this sort of thing before, you know, rotation matrices and so on, so it does the job. All right, so let's think through this. This is a bit of a funny thing we're about to do. So this is a number on the bottom. It's an inner product. This is a number here, another inner product. Of course, a ratio is a number. So let's do some fishy things. All right, so and going from here to here, just put the, the um, division, made the division clear, right? So that this is some number divided by a number. That's all, instead of um, the brackets around the outside. Okay, so we can kind of spread some things out a little bit. So this, this, this can be by itself. It's one over a number. Fine. Again, a number here times a vector. That's good. All right. Now, and as I said before, this is the length of a square. Very important. It's Pythagoras, okay? So let's do something shifty. We can go to here. We can move that across. It's just a number, right? So we could have a scalar multiplying a vector before or after. That's not a big deal. And then look at this, right? So how, do, how does this work? So this is a 1 by m and an m by 1, right? and that's how we get our 1 by 1. Here's the vector. That's the only thing that's a vector so far, right? It's an m by 1, but there's an m by 1 and 1 by m. So we could combine these two. We could make a product out of them, and that's what happens in this. Maybe a way to do this is to say, look at that. I'm going to combine those two and leave that one by itself. And this is still a healthy matrix operation, right? So now it's good. A, so this is uh, A times A transpose. So it's an outer product. We are being very bad in some ways. It, seem, it, seems like, it, seems, it seems like we're being bad, but this is completely fine. Um, <clears throat> sort of a fun thing to do. So this is an outer product here, and it's an M by M now, right? So it's a square matrix. So now we're getting, and B is on the end here, right? So B is here on the end. So we identify that this first part is indeed the length of A squared. So it's just on the bottom. And we have this piece here still, which is the same as what we had before. Let's be a little smarter. So we can take one of the length squared and put one of the lengths here and one of the lengths here. So what is that? So now we've got A divided by its length and A trans transpose divided by its length. These are unit vectors, right? And that's what we, we should hope to see, right? That the length of A should not matter. This is good. This is good. Good. Length of A uh, let me put the right thing. Cannot matter. Because if we doubled the length of A or whatever, it doesn't it, it shouldn't matter. So it's really clear here now. So this is still a, this is an outer product, as I've marked again. This is an outer product. I'll write it as P. And it's a projection operator. Right. P is a projection operator. Big deal. Um, so we can just take B. Now we've made this P. It depends on A. We've made it. It's an M by M matrix. It's a square matrix. You feed a B in, you go, and it projects that B all the time. Great. So that's a big deal. That's a big deal. This is much more powerful if we can do that. Um, this is just to go back to our example. We're projecting uh, B onto A. 
So let's construct the pieces. So a hat, right, this unit vector, again, this is unit vector, make unit vector. You know, usually when you start creating unit vectors, they're square roots, so we'll get some nasty things. So it's one, the entries are one and two, so it's one squared plus two squared on the bottom, square root of it, dividing through, so we get a one over root five, right? And now we're gonna make our uh, projection matrix. So here it is, exactly this thing. So it's a column times a row, outer product, which seems like weird things, but here's a perfect example of where they really, really um, matter tremendously. And we're gonna see them again and again in the, last, in the remainder of the course. So uh, if you remember this, this outer products, you can just take the rows and multiply them by the column entry sitting here. So they're all the same. The rows all look the same except that multiply by, right? They're all um, proportional to each other or proportional to the original row. So one times one, two gives us this and two times two, four gives us this. And we can think of the same thing with the columns, right? One, two, two, four. Symmetric. So this is guaranteed. Note, uh, symmetry is guaranteed And we've talked about this construction before. Incredibly important sort of thing is this A, A transpose or A transpose transpose A. This sort of form is always symmetric. So for the example we had, we're just going to multiply the B. And here's B minus three minus one. Multiply by this projection operator. And, and sorry, the, the square root of fives, they combine to give us root five, uh, just five. So multiply through. What do we get? Let's do it. Uh, one over five, sitting at the front. One, two gives us minus three, uh, minus five. That's this point. Um, minus, minus three, minus two, so that's minus five. <coughs> Should be able to get rid of that for that. Annoyance. Minus six, minus four. Did I get that right? Yep. Minus 10, so all of this is equal to minus one, minus two, which is what we had before, right? Minus one, minus two. So this is good, you can feed in new B, uh, we'll be able to operate um, on that with this, with now, now we've turned this whole thing into this special matrix here, this, uh, this, this projection operation, beautiful, very good. Okay, <clears throat> so that was, that was in two dimensions. So if we're, if we're in M dimensions and we're projecting into a line, we'll have an M by M matrix that will do the job. All right, last piece here is that, so this, this, will, this is something that we'll see if, uh, with this sneakiness is something we'll see with eigenvalues, so it's good to see. So that's just the, the error is the original vector minus um, the projected uh, portion. So that's again B. And now we have this, it's minus the projection of B. Hmm. We can't combine these in a simple way now because what do we have? We have uh, in, in general, this is, this is a, a, an M by one. This is an M by M. And this is an m by one. So while we while they're both m by ones, we can't really right. We can't do this. This is wrong. One minus projection. This is wrong. We can't do that. This is this is a one by one, and this is an m by m. We can't combine them like that. So whenever we have something like this, we can always pull out an m by m identity matrix. So now things all have the right structures and then we can factor out the identity matrix, right? So identity is our multiplicative one for uh, matrices and there it is. So that's nice. So this is a, <clears throat> this is, this projects B if you like. So this projects this operator, this big matrix, which is I minus the projection operator projects um, 
uh, or if, let me let me just say it like this extracts uh, the e e part of a. And if you or if you add e and b together, then this part's going to cancel, and we'll just get the identity. So that is a picture of Pratchett. This is happiness. <clears throat> Much happiness. Because of the operator, really, actually. Not just projections. Uh, over P of A. Good work. It's a cat attacking the day. Attacking the day. Really determined work by Pratchett there. Okay, so that's that's a start. The next thing, which is set up here, is going to be the normal equation. And this is fantastic. 